Today I'm going to talk about relasting a pair of cowboy boots. I have a pair of my own boots here and I've just simply never liked the last that I made them on. So I tore them down and I'm going to put them on a different last. I have the last fit and the insole on and I'm ready to put the boots on the last. The problem is, since these boots have already been made, there's no lasting allowance. It's really tough to get this boot back on another last that's basically the same dimensions. It's shaped slightly different, but basically it's the same dimensions as the old last. I'm going to show you how I deal with this problem. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the insole that I just cut to this last that I'm going to be using. I'm going to take it off. In order to give myself the room that I need to get this boot inseamed, I'm going to put the insole on a smaller last. My last is a size 4B, and I'm going to put this insole on a size 2B. I typically like to go down a size or a size and a half and also go down a width, but I couldn't find a size 2A, so I'm going with the 2B. I'm going to center the insole on this new smaller last. I just want a little bit of insole hanging out from the last all around. It's a little long in the back, but it really doesn't matter. The boot won't be lasted on this particular last. I'm just going to leave this last in here long enough to get it inseamed, and then I can shove the original last back in. I'm going to position it with the heel in first, and then see if I can bring the toe up and over. There we go. Make sure it's on there straight. Sometimes bringing that toe up and over is the hard part. All right. So I have the boot on this little last. Because it's a small last in there, I have some wiggle room along the edges so that when I'm inseaming, I can find those original holes. And if the leather won't quite come up, the insole will push down around the edges of the last and I can get it inseamed. Okay, I've inseamed the boots around the forepart. I took out the nails. And now I'm going to remove that size 2 last and put the real last in. I like to put leather conditioner, this is Bic 4, down inside the boots and smear it around because that kind of makes the leather inside slick. Then it's easier to get the last in. make sure the insole is centered on the heel area of the real last and also all the way back to the back of the heel. So that insole is in the correct spot on the heel. Then I'll go ahead and put one in the shank area. Now I can relast it. Then I'll use my left upper cord to lace the boot to the insole in the shank area and in the heel area. I wanted to show you the finished boot. I have the inseaming completed and I'm ready to move on and finish these boots. a boot maker but a forklift operator so if she ever needs a second job or quit making boots she can always drive a forklift. So 
Dad wants everyone to know he can move it all by himself. Okay, we had to take the door off because that's 32 inches. This is 32 inches exact. All of our other doors, that back door is what, 28? Yeah. So this is the only door we can come through the shop with. So we took the screws out. Boy, it barely fits. Yeah, that one the fit with the door on there. in her rightful home. This is where my old curved needle is sitting now in Paige's area. Paige now has her own curved needle. One of my regular viewers suggested that I talk about these boots before I sent them off to the customer. This was one of the hardest pair of boots that I've ever built and I'll tell you a little bit about them so you understand why. The top design is the coat of arms for the country of Austria. It's done entirely with leather inlay and overlay. There's no painting. Every color you see is a different piece of leather. This design was very complex and the fact that it had all these little narrow, long, skinny elements made it incredibly difficult. Then there was also the black stitching on yellow. If you want to see how good of a stitcher you are, try stitching with black thread on yellow leather. You'll find out you're not that good. It's incredibly hard to make your stitching look nice when you're using a dark colored thread on light colored leather. In the actual design of the Austrian state seal, the crown on the eagle's head is a brick pattern. Well, that was much too small for me to stitch a grid pattern to create bricks. So what I did is I found some yellow lizard and I did the crown in lizard to get it, give it a little bit of texture. I also did the eagle's legs and talons in lizard. I did that to give it texture but also to separate it from the yellow hammer and sickle. If I hadn't used two different pieces of leather they would have just blended into each other and even though they're both yellow I wanted some distinction between the claw, and the hammer and sickle. The chain was another little fun detail. It was too tiny to create with leather inlay and overlay, and each link is a square. It's two stitches and two stitches and two stitches and two stitches in a square. It actually didn't take as long as I thought it would, and it looks better than I thought it would too, which is always a pleasant surprise. Anytime you do an element with eyes in leather inlay and overlay, it's always a surprise to see what sort of expression you're going to get. I was pretty happy with the way this guy's eyes turned out though. He looks quite fierce. Another thing that I had to think about when I was creating this boot top design is the fact that this eagle is almost square. His head is in line with the top of his wings and the bottom of his tail is in line with the bottom of the chain. If you think about the way a boot top is shaped, it's kind of an H. The reason I say that is because you have a scallop that comes down in the front, and you have a tongue that comes up in the center, and that leaves you with a small area in the center and two longer areas on each side. That's the reason that butterflies and eagles were very popular designs for cowboy boot tops. Because you have the body in the center, and the wings spreading up and down. But in this case, this eagle was not quite so accommodating and his wings just sort of stuck out on the sides. To help with this problem, I did a special scallop. It's not, it's not a stove pipe. I didn't want it straight across, but it just dips down a little and then comes back up. And that way I still get the full height up here. 
This eagle has a really long skinny tail that drops down a lot and I wanted to get the design as low down as possible to help fill in this empty space that happens down here. What I did was, instead of bringing the tongue up to a point like it normally does, the tongue comes to a point on each side and it dips down in the center and then I dropped the bottom of the eagle's tail down into that point that was formed. I've never made a boot tongue shaped exactly like this one before. I, hope I sent the client a picture of the boot tops while I was working on them. He noticed the empty space that is down here. He said he loved the boot tops, but could I move the whole design down so that there wasn't this empty space here? Well, one, since I was already working on the boot tops, it was too late to move anything down. And two, he had already requested, don't change anything about the design. Don't elongate it. Don't spread it out or compress it leave it exactly as it is. So I had to explain to him that the reason I can't move the design down is because of the boot tongue. I moved it down absolutely as far as I can. I can't bring it down any farther and that leaves a little space here at the bottom. The foot of the boot is hornback alligator tail and that wasn't easy to work with either. Usually American Alligator is my favorite leather to work with. It's lovely to crimp, it's lovely to last, but Hornback Alligator Tail is evidently the exception to this rule, unless I just got two really grumpy Hornback Alligators. These boots tried to twist so much when I put them on the last, and it was quite a fight that afternoon in the shop trying to get both of these boots on the last. They turned out okay though, and I think he's going to like them. I sure hope so.